This is a demonstration that I did with my students in class to talk about the characteristics of Ethernet. Ethernet was designed to work on a shared media, and as such, in Ethernet, each device on the network has a NIC or network interface card that has a MAC address. And that address is needed for communicating within uh, a shared network over an Ethernet network. So, first of all, Ethernet was designed as a shared media. Every device on the network needs to have a MAC address. By media, we usually mean the wire, okay? It could be like uh, copper wire, fiber optic, or it could even be wireless. But when we use the word media in the curriculum, we're talking about the wire. Now, in the early days of Ethernet, all devices were interconnected by a coax cable, and everybody was on the same cable. So Ethernet frames that would travel on the network would be seen by every other device on the network. But the device that would reply or would pick up that frame would be the device that was the des destined or the destination MAC address. So if, let's say, PC3's MAC address matched the destination MAC address in the frame, then PC3 would pick up the frame and the other computers would drop it. So it was designed to work on a shared media, MAC addresses. It's a broadcast medium where there's lots of broadcasts and packets are intended or frames are intended to go to every other device and then the right device will then pick it up. Um, it's a contention-based protocol where any device can send at any time. They don't have to wait a turn. And this is in contrast to a token ring LAN technology uh, where you had to wait for your turn and have the token before you could send. In Ethernet, any computer can send at any time. The problem is, if two computers decide to send at the same time, you'll have collisions. And Ethernet was designed to account for those collisions. So, as a form of media access control, Ethernet was designed to work with CSMACD, or Carrier Sense Multi Access with Collision Detection. So, if two computers sent frames on the network at the same time and they collided and there was a collision, the NICs on the PCs would be able to sense that collision and would then uh, act accordingly um, so that data could eventually be resent. So it can account, Ethernet can account dynamically for collisions on the network. Of course, if there's too many collisions, it's going to slow down the network and basically uh, cause problems on the network. So in the early days, we had to interconnect these PCs. I said first we had coax cable, and then there was the development of twisted pair Ethernet copper cables that could then connect to a centralized device like a hub. And today, you'd be hard-pressed to find a hub in your computer store. Today, we are using switches, which were much more advanced, or are much more advanced than hubs, and have displaced hubs, basically. But using Packet Tracer, we can still bring out a hub to show how Ethernet operates in a shared environment where every device is on hub. Now, a hub is an interesting device because if a frame hits the hub, a hub will broadcast that frame out of every port that is active. So if PC6 wants to send to PC3, as soon as that frame hits the hub, it's going to go everywhere. All right? And let's demonstrate this. So first of all, I'm going to open up PC6. And for PC6 to communicate with PC3, PC6 needs to know the MAC address of PC3. Now, how do we know if PC6 knows the MAC address of PC3? Well, we don't. So what we can do is we open up a command prompt and we put ARP-A in here, and that'll help us look at the ARP cache. And the ARP cache will show us what MAC addresses we know of. And you can see that this PC does not know any MAC addresses. So the first thing that needs to happen for PC6 to communicate with PC3 is an ARP broadcast needs to be broadcast on the network and so the PC can find the MAC address of PC3. So we can observe this in simulation mode. I'll go into simulation mode and I'll say edit filters and we want to look at ARP and let's say ICMP. We're going to use a ping to send an echo request from PC6 to PC3 and then PC3 will reply to PC6 
But to do that, you're really observing two protocols. First, ARP, which needs to resolve the MAC address, and then ICMP. And we'll also be able to see the broadcast nature of, um, of the network with the hub and with the ARP protocol. So let's see if we can get this working and make some sense of it. So I'm going to choose simple PDU here. This will be a ping from PC6 to PC3. And we can observe it in action. So you can see we want a ping. And you can see the first thing that needs to happen here is an ARP. And I'll just say capture forward. So there goes the ARP packet to the hub. It's a broadcast packet. If we look at it, we can see it. Let's see here, inbound details here. You can see it's an ARP packet. The source MAC address, the target MAC address is zero. And that's because we don't know the target's MAC address yet. Destination MAC address, FFFFFF. So this is a broadcast MAC address. And so you can see that this packet, this ARP packet, is destined as a broadcast packet. So it's going to go everywhere on the network. Now, of course, the hub would send it everywhere anyway, so we'll see that in a second. So we'll hit Capture Forward. You can see it's broadcast to every computer on the network, right? And only one computer should reply, which should be PC3, because that ARP request was who has the MAC address for 192.168.1.3, and PC3 is the computer that has that MAC address, so PC3 will be the one to reply. So we'll capture forward again. You can see PC3 replied. The other PCs dropped the ARP broadcast. And then the hub broadcasts the response to every computer on the network. As again, all of these other computers have to drop that frame, and PC6 is the one that accepts it. So now PC6 knows the MAC address of PC3. And we can see that if we open up the PC, look in the command prompt, do an ARP A again, and you can see that the PC has learned the MAC address. For 192.168.1.3, the MAC address is this. So now PC6 can ping with ICMP PC3. So we'll see that. Let's, let's take a look first of all, though, to see does PC3 know PC6's MAC address? Well, just for demonstration purposes. We'll do an ARP A, and you can see it does. So it should be able to reply. So let's give this a shot. We'll hit Capture Forward. You can see here this time it's an ICMP packet that's hitting the hub. Of course, the hub is going to broadcast it everywhere. And it's destined for one device only. Notice PC3 is the one who's going to accept it. PC5 won't. PC4 won't. 2 and 1 won't. And then you can see PC3 replies. Once again, the hub broadcasts it everywhere. In other words, it's a broadcast media. Ethernet frames go everywhere. And you can see here PC6 is the one that picks it up. So, And that can go on and on. But you can see that's pretty much the end of the line there. Um, I'm going to have to reset the simulation. So now what we can do is I'll reset the simulation go back to real-time mode. Let's run another demonstration, except this time what we're going to do is we'll say, okay, we're on a hub, right? It's a shared medium. What happens if two computers want to send to each other at the same time? 